program and really excited to hear how HGE's HR and OD team um, is progressing with the work and, and, and to look forward to learning from you. So over to you. Hello, can I get a thumbs up that you can hear me okay? Thank you. Um, so thank you for that introduction, Amar. Um, as Amar said, I am Ella Humes. My pronouns are also she and her. And I am um, a, on the Enduring Work Collaborative Group for our Human Resources and Organisation Development function within Health Education England. <laughs> a little bit. Um, I am also a project manager within the Human Resources and Organisational Development function at HEE. And um, I am a project manager on our Enjoying Work Collaborative group as well. So I'm project managing it. And you might be thinking that, um, why are we project managing it? Because an Enjoying Work Collaborative is so much more than just project management. And that is a fantastic question. So Emma, can you, someone put me onto the next slide, please? Fantastic. So why project management is, is the question then that we're going to answer. Um, several reasons why. So project management is focused on continuous improvement. It also enables a dedicated resource to our collaboratives group. And it's a proven way of planning, monitoring and driving that progress through that de dedicated resource. And because of that, it enables our collaborative to engage with collaboration and with, co with um, colleagues in our wider function. It enables us to create and test initiatives to map the uh, benefits of the initiatives that we're implementing and testing as well, to make decisions as well, and to um, report the progress of the work that we are testing and trying and implementing also. So that's why project management. Our collaborative is not a project though, and so that's a, that's a distinction to make. Um, can someone put me onto the next slide please as well? So why our collaborative is not a project is because it is so much more than that. So for us, um, the Enjoying Work Collaborative is a mindset and a movement, and it's a way of being. It's a way that we can collaborate, communicate, invent, test, learn and improve for the purpose of gaining joy at work, both individually and collectively. So it's not a project because it doesn't have an end date. Although projects are about continuous improvement, our collaborative is um, truly about continuous improvement. So there's no end date in sight for us here. That's different to, the, to any other kind of project that I run where we would expect an end date on the work we're doing. We're also a collaborative group. We're not a project team. And the collaborative group um, gets support from the wider function and colleagues in the wider function as well. So this is work that is done by us all, for us all, rather than just a select few of individuals. Next slide, please. So that kind of leads us on to our working structure. And when you think of a project, you might think of a structure that's slightly more hierarchical with um, your project team at, at the base and at the top, your sponsor of the project and your project manager supporting that. So that's not our working structure in our collaborative, and this is the working structure that, that we kind of go on. Um, we have a big circle in the middle of that slide there, which the outer circle is the wider team, and that's because everyone's involved in making a difference to, um, to improving our working lives through the work that the collaborative are doing. The slightly inner circle is what we call our change champions, and they are people that um, you might say on a project team if you're not um, doing a collaborative piece of work, but there are focused um, individuals, if you like, in our function, HR and organisation development, that are working on implementing these initiatives. We've also got in the middle um, a business change manager, myself and a PMO, which is a project management officer, and a data champion. And these three roles are also responsible for all of the collaborative works that we're doing and kind of shaping it, but take on slightly a different role to what possibly the change champions and the wider team take on. So separate to that group, we then have off to the side, our external facilitator, the Royal College of Psychiatry, and also our sponsor. And so this is where it differs to how we would normally manage a project because we've not got a hierarchical structure, we've very much got a collaborative um, working structure. Next slide, please. 
So um, give you a little bit more context about those roles and responsibilities broken down slightly more as well. So as I said, we've got a business change manager for us in our function, that is Colette May, who's also on the call today. And Colette's role is to be accountable for the delivery of the collaborative's overall outcomes. Again, Colette provides dedicated resource, and that's the positive of doing it through the structure that, that we work on. You've then got myself, who's very much responsible for making sure that the work that we do moves forwards um, and for overseeing the management of that delivery. And the project management officer role, who supports um, myself in that role as well. So again, that's dedicated resource that we've got given within our function to support our collaborative's work. We've then got our volunteers, which are our data champion and our change champion. Our data champion is also a change champion, but they take on an additional role and that's the responsibility for managing all of our data platforms, such as Improve Well, um, and for management and analysis of colleague engagement data, whether that's qualitative data that we get in or quantitative data. So that for us is someone called Jasmine King, and she volunteered for that role as well. And the change champions were also volunteered um, across our function. And they are responsible for delivering the allocated work streams or mini projects, if you like, within our collaborative group. And I'll touch on a few more of them later as well. And they're also responsible for supporting the management of the delivery of the collaborative's work. And then we've got the wider team. And the wider team um, haven't volunteered um, in the way that a change champion has or a data champion has. The wider team are ultimately still responsible for creating this culture change that we want to see within our organisation, which is why they are on this list of roles and responsibilities that we also shared with our function when we were launching the collaborative group. And the wider team responsible for engaging with the work that we do, but also for providing feedback and suggestions on how we can improve and for getting involved as and when they want. This is not a closed group by any means. We have um, designated change champions and a designated role for all the others. Um, and anyone in the wider team can come along to our team meetings. They can get engaged in any of the initiatives that we're doing, but it's very much on an ad hoc basis as and when they're able to with their work and as and when they're interested in doing it also. So very much um, inclusivity is our objective there. Next slide, please. So how we got started, thank you. So um, how we got started, because we came at our Enjoying Work Collaborative from a project management perspective, the first thing that we did after we'd had our project management, sorry, after we'd had our first call with the World College of Psychiatry was we created a project initiation document or a project information document. And this document scoped out for us all of those things listed there. Um, and it's something that we got agreement on as to what we wanted to do with the collaborative to start off with. So really it allows us to kind of very much brainstorm and highlight our key work streams to get the collaborative off the ground. So it wasn't a full um, project document from a beginning to end, because as I said, this, this project doesn't have an end, but it very much helped us introduce um, some of the initiatives, which again, I'm gonna to touch upon later, that we wanted to work on to begin with. And so just to read off there, the the things that we included in that project document were the background or context of why we're doing this. In HE, we have an objective to become a best place to work or a great place to work. So it very much linked in and aligned with that objective for our organisation. It also um, covered the outcomes, what was in scope for us and what was out of scope for us. And very much, um, again, we're HR and organisational development. So it's it's something that we look on anyway, improving work for um, our organisation. That's part of my normal role, um, which when I'm not working on the collaborative, I'll be working on projects to improve um, how we make HG a best place to work. So very much what was in scope and out of scope and confirming that it was an internal approach to how we as a function are going to um, make improvements and test improvements even to try and improve our uh, enjoyment and job satisfaction. We also covered the benefits of doing this, how we were going to track and monitor those benefits with them improve well, and uh, the resources we needed, including the, the people as well within our collaborative, very much, to, as I said before, all of us needed to be involved and consulted to some capacity within our function, um, what work packages and we were going to achieve, and again, I will touch on that in a minute. And then, um, 
array log. For any of you that haven't really heard of array log before, array log is a tool in project management which covers potential risks, issues, assumptions, decisions, or dependencies that you may need to consider, which may or may not affect your project's success. So very much, it's a very useful tool, especially when you're going about implementing your initiatives, just to think about those things, what, what risks or issues might stop it from, from happening um, at a certain time, and it just helps you proactively address them rather than reactively addressing them as well. And then um, a high level, um, look at our communications, our, our budget as well, because that's something that we always touch upon in a project information document, even if there is no budget. And what we would do with business as usual in transitioning your work over from a project to BAU. And again, as I said, for this, for this project, it didn't have a start and an end. Normally that's a focus for us, but within our project information document, we don't have um, an end date per se, but all of the initiatives that we're, we're going to be implementing, they couldn't sit with the change champions. So we very much need to think from the beginning, okay, everything that we um, test and create and implement, who's going to look after it within our function? How are we going to um, allocate responsibility there? Are we going to rotate that responsibility? How frequently are we going to do it? And it also helped us to create future-proofed um, initiatives rather than testing something which might be quite extravagant and difficult to replicate again and again. Can you click next, please? Thank you. So the next thing we also created from a project management perspective is a terms of reference. This is a kind of mini, mini up here, if you like, um, which is for the benefit of those that are working on the project in project terms. So for, for us, this was for our change champions, our data champion, uh, project management officer, project manager, business change manager, all of those individuals except the wider workforce. And that's just to confirm what we're doing and how we're doing it and what commitment is needed from everyone. We have actually since scrapped our terms of reference because we've changed it. It was a formal document and we've changed it into more of a PowerPoint slide deck, which is similar to what you're seeing here, um, scoping out our roles and responsibilities across our team because we felt that that worked much better. Um, but that's what we did to kind of get started and confirm everything from the beginning so that we're putting the right foot forwards. Next slide, please. Um, thank you. So how we manage tasks now. So very much um, this project is an iterative um, or agile approach to project management. So we currently, from my perspective as a project manager, have a RAID log or risk issues, assumptions, decisions, dependencies log. We also have an action log, which very high level looks at what we're doing. And primarily we have a Gantt chart. So these, these are all things that I manage within my role. The change champions, the business change manager, our data champion don't, do not really get involved with this. It's mainly so that in my position, I can see, okay, what's realistic in terms of our timeframes? Um, and I put a little image of a Gantt chart below for you. So if you've not used a Gantt chart before, if you're not using one for your um, collaborative, I recommend looking into it. They can, they can be a very helpful tool just to um, enable you to actually take into account all of the things that need to be achieved for um, the end goal to be achieved. And I think, when you're not using a Gantt chart, it's very easy to, to put a date on it and think, yes, this is achievable, we can do that, but it can also be easy to put an unrealistic date on it because you're not giving yourself the time to consider the, um, the factors that are involved and the steps involved to make that come into fruition. Um, and if you're not doing that, then you can end up pushing things back and that can end up decreasing the morale as well within your collaborative group. So. Um, if you're struggling with any of those things, I definitely recommend trying to plot things on a Gantt chart just to, to take it from a different approach and see if that works for you. Can you click next, please? So in addition to those three things that I've just mentioned, the RAID, Action Log, and um, Gantt chart that I manage as a project manager for our collaborative group, we also manage our tasks for our project on Microsoft Planner using Office 365. So we have Office 365 in HD, which is a fantastic collaborative tool that Microsoft offer. And Planner is a free application as part of that, which you can create, you can create an MS Teams group and a planner to go alongside it. And it's essentially um, a collaborative checklist, if you like. So it looks a little bit like that picture that I popped on the screen there, although imagine it full scale, it allows you to pop tasks on, 
pop in due dates um, or start dates as well, assign individuals through their Microsoft Office account, such as my name is assigned to the task um, on the right hand side around the project plan, the raid and the racing. Um, I should say racing means who's going to be responsible, accountable, consulted or involved on your work. So again, that's just another standard project management tool. So it allows you to assign individuals to tasks, it allows you to comment on them and keep a feed, it allows you to add notes, it allows you to add attachments so they can be uh, website links or documents. And again, this is very beneficial for us using Office 365 because all of our documents are on a SharePoint drive, which is again a collaborative space within the cloud that we can all work on a document together or enables us to all work on a document together. So attaching links to a task like that means that anyone can access them at any point and we can truly collaborate. That really helps us as well, I should say, because since COVID-19, we have all been working virtually um, or primarily virtually. So some of us have been in the office here and there, but primarily we've all been in our own um, homes or in our own personal working spaces. And so being able to collaborate online through tools such as this is really helpful. From my perspective as well, um, project managing the collaborative's work, it's really helpful to know what people are doing, where people are at, their progress um, and just from a high level view, seeing everything all in one place as well. Um, and it helps for, for file management too. Next slide, please. Thank you. So um, one of our main goals within our project initiation document at the very beginning was to create a best place to work plan for HR and organisational development. And as I said before, best place to work is a primary goal for our organisation. It's one of our primary objectives. And we wanted to, to take that goal and that, that objective for our function and understand what that meant for us and how we could work towards achieving that ultimate goal as well. So, um, lost my trail of thought, sorry. Um, so one thing that we had listed on the project initiation document was to create this best place to work plan or plan on the page. And it also linked in to the Enjoying Work Collaborative suggestion of creating a driver diagram as well. So the Enjoying Work Collaborative have provided us with a template driver diagram. We went down uh, this route, which is slightly different, and we aligned the six um, themes that are in light blue, just there at the top, to our best place to work objective and the themes that are aligned um, in the objective for that within HE. So the names are slightly different, the titles are slightly different, the themes very much linked to us for us, linked up for us, and we um, we were very happy with that concept for our driver diagram instead because it helped us see how our initiatives were, were contributing to our organisational objective. And to the left hand side, um, it says equality, diversity and inclusion because that runs for everything that we do, same as our best place work objective. And to the right hand side, it says the employee experience because again, that's at the heart of everything we do as well. So um, at the bottom as well of this screen are the values for HEE and they also run for everything that we do. So they're on there too. Um, so the six things that we were looking at were values and behaviours, reward and recognition, relationships and camaraderie, talent and development, consultation and engagement and safety and trust. We haven't got to working on all of these yet because our primary objectives are those things in kind of grey with an orange border. So our relationships and camaraderie column has all of what we call our kind of quick wins, things that we thought would definitely be making an impact to our colleagues. And we initially created these through um, collaboration with the Change Champions group. Um, we have since done some work on the consultation and engagement theme, which has reiterated that these things, such as the fun session, the organisational chart, the chat and relax sessions, are also um, initiatives that our wider function would like to see as well. So that's really positive. So for the fun sessions, we're currently looking at putting together some winter festivities, and we've got some change champions working on that. For the organisational chart and responsibilities, we're looking at how we can do something very interactive in SharePoint to share more of our, thank you Emily, to share more of our um, information around our roles and responsibilities. I think in our function, there was common feedback that we, we work in silos within our team, and this is probably enhanced since we've been working remotely and um, virtually. And so looking at how we can build on this again um, and build better relationships, build better awareness of um, what we all do and who we all are. 
And that also links into the next initiative, which was some chat and relax sessions. So our first chat and relax sessions, I'm thrilled to say, is going to happen on Tuesday next week. And what we're going to be doing there is we go, we've invited all colleagues to an MS Teams, um, I can't remember the specific term, but an MS Teams call where we can use breakout rooms. And we're going to be um, separating all colleagues that join into separate breakout rooms, very random, um, random breakout rooms when Give, to just to give you the opportunity really to connect and know each other because we don't really get those water cooler moments anymore that we got in the office and we're going to be providing some suggestions on things to discuss as well to get the conversation started so if i move on to consultation engagement quickly because i'm mindful that my time is nearly up with you all um we've got the improve our surveys in the middle um which we're all doing i'm sure and then at the bottom we've got meetings blogs and webinars. I think especially in our organisation, we tend to write quite a lot of content when it comes to communications. And so we have tried to stay away from that as a collaborative group. And we've gone down the route more of putting on webinars for the collaborative and updating um, our, our function on what we're doing and also blogs. So we've been, we've done three blogs to date and we've all recorded um, something to do with the work that we're doing, what the enjoying work collaborative is, and we've shared that through a blog via email just to give our colleagues the opportunity to, to give their eyes a break, I suppose, from reading and just to be able to sit back and listen and relax while they get an update on what we're doing. And then the third one, which is right at the top, is roundtable discussions. Now, we've just finished our roundtable discussions and we're just collating our feedback and we're hoping that this will inform our best place to work plan. What we did with our roundtable discussions is we organised um, all of our colleagues within our function an opportunity to join change champions on a roundtable discussion where we asked them three questions all related to um, what makes a good place to work and also what we could do to make HR and OD a better place to work. Um, so we asked those questions and we got re a really good response rate. We got 51 people attend, and that, although it was in half term, so that for us was very positive. And we are currently finalising that and hope to inform that into what our plan is going to look like and build out this drive diagram a bit more. So I'm going to finish there. I believe that's my last slide. And I believe we're now going on to questions. Thanks, Ella. Thank you so much. That's fantastic. Um, a really good description of how you've organised yourselves as a team uh, or a community to to do this work together. Uh, really, really some li lovely ideas that we could all take away from this about um, clarifying roles, thinking about the support around this work, and, and now getting into some of the ideas you're testing too, Ella. So fantastic work that I'm going to encourage people. If you've got questions for Ella, put them in the chat. And Ella, if you don't mind responding to them through the chat, that would be fantastic. Um, lots here for people to maybe pick up with you and think a little bit more, learn a little bit more about so they can, we can take away and apply to our own work. We're going to...